in 23 professional bouts. His record, 16 victories, six defeats, one draw, six wins coming by way of Nugget. Hailing from and fighting out of Oxnard, California, here is Eric Ruiz! And next is a board across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Where he went in silver, he weighed in 122 pounds even. In 17 pounds, he is perfect. 17 victories, no defeats.
instead of going with the basic one-two. So Diego de la Hoya varying his punches, making Eric Ruiz think, where are the punches coming from, what angle, and at what speed? Because de la Hoya, who there takes a nice counter left from Ruiz, is really dominating the ring generalship in this fight. The ring generalship is a key, it's very important. That's the key word because when you see the ring generalship we talked about earlier, you see the movement, he doesn't stand still, he pivots, he goes to the side. He gives him his shoulders, left shoulders. He gives Luis his left shoulders just to blind him with the right hand. And he shoots the right hand every time he gives the right shoulder to take away for, her, for him knowing that the right hand is coming. And, and, and that's important because you let your opponent run into the punch. Ruiz though lands a nice right there as De La Hoya comes into the punch, moving laterally, but just not set completely so Ruiz can't generate as much power as he would like as round three comes this to an for end. The bell. And Ruiz is throwing 52 per round and De La Hoya 77 per round. On top of that being a lot more accurate so the fighter from Mexicali, who now resides in Calexico, California, is really doing things that he expected to do here in the first three rounds of the fight. Round four, alongside Bernard Hopkins, I'm Bernardo Osuna. What does Ruiz need to do to balance things out? Well, first, he needs to go ahead now and, and let that jab go, not one, but two or three, because he's getting countered. He's getting countered by De La Hoya every time he throw one jab. Like, now he throw three or four, but they petty jabs. They pet, pet, pet. He needs to throw now hard jabs. And let that right hand go, wherever it goes. Down, up, he has to let it go like he's letting it go now. He's charging into a right uppercut. And he got, he got something out of that. Yeah, De La Hoya's leaning in, so he's susceptible to that right uppercut that we saw just moments ago. And this is turning more into a firefight, and this is exactly what Ruiz and his corner would want. And he got caught. De La Hoya got caught with a left hook on exchange. The reason he's getting countered with the left hook because he's leaving his feet with the left hook. He's jumping off balance with the left hook, trying to get too much in it, and he get hit. If he does that and get hit in the air, he will go down. He's off balance. Great observation from a future Hall of Famer in Bernard Hopkins. So that's another thing to look for, the footwork of these two fighters and the lunging, the, those subtle mistakes that a fighter makes at a young age that need to be corrected in order to not be caught. It, it has to be because it's, it's part of, he's anxious. He's anxious. And when you're anxious, you, you want to throw the punch, you see the, the target, and you're just so anxious, you want to get there, and you don't take your time and get there right whether off the jab to set it up and then you leap with the left hook or you just let it go. Right now he's settled. That's how you throw a, a jab. That's how you set up the next punch. When you're nice, you're smooth, you're calm, and you're just letting the punches flow. But when you jump anxiously, you're running into something that you don't want to run into. This is where Ruiz sets up camp in the center of the ring. Either he'll come find you or you can come to him, but that's where you'll see him as they both exchange big left hooks. Reese continues with a nice combination, and then De La Hoya says, I've got something for you. Nice one-two by De La Hoya, big right by De La Hoya, and so does Reese respond with just one right. It's just the number of punches favored De La Hoya. Both guys had a great exchange on that fight, uh, on, that, on that punch there. Both guys got in with good shots. Eric Ruiz was able to land. You know, Ruiz said, my kids keep me going. I want to prove to them that I'm capable of doing great things by working not only at my regular day job, but also as a professional fighter. And Diego de la Hoya says, I have a two month old son. I never thought I'd be a father at such a young age. But now I don't do this for myself. I do it for him to give him a better life. So you see how that always affects you, Bihop. You became a parent as a fighter. How important is family when you're up there and doing this? It's very important, especially when you got to dig deep. When you got to dig deep, when things get tough in there. When, you know, the corner only can give you instructions. But sometimes you have to dig deep and find that spirit and find that motivation to be able to get through those rounds 
that's not in your favor. So yeah, when I, I can relate to De La Hoya when he mentioned that yesterday at the at the meeting, is that look, he got all these responsibilities, now he wants to go ahead and fulfill his dreams. All right, through five rounds, let's take a look at the total punch stats here, brought to you by CompuBox, and it's gotta be in favor of Diego De La Hoya, almost 100, well, more landed than thrown out of 300, so 33% efficiency. Really, you can see the dominance of De La Hoya. Not only that, it's accuracy, it's effectiveness, and it's that jab, B-Hop. That jab is stiff. We call it the shotgun jab back in Philly. You know, snaps your head back, gets you off balance, make your neck hurt. I mean, he's throwing that jab so effectively, you know, Reese has got to sit and pause and then come in. And that's what you, what you got to do. And then you can get those set up shots in there, those three or four punch combination. But I like to see him pump that jab, that shotgun jab constantly. Let that thing go, let it go when you can. And he can set something up. Nice one, two combination from De La Hoya who steps in and then moves out. He still looks very fresh through these first five rounds, B Hop. And We've talked about the toughness of Ruiz, who's never been stopped as a pro. Neither fighter has ever been down in their respective professional careers. So you can see that toughness in both guys. De La Hoya got a little bit of pretty boy in him, but not when it comes to fighting. No, but he got some style. But, you know, when it comes to fighting, you know, when you got to defend yourself, that pretty stuff go out the window. And Ruiz is just coming forward, you know, and he looks just as fresh, too. Both guys been throwing a lot of leather as you know the copy box will show and they still got enough strength and energy to still come forward we're getting to the midway point of this fight where de la hoya's corner is extremely happy with the work he's putting in so far against the very game eric ruiz listen for the bell time you go out there for a run right yeah after this fight is over Gotta go out there and get that air. All right, just watch out for the rattlesnakes, my man. We're in the middle of the Sonoran Desert, and Diego de la Hoya, and his opponent, Eric Ruiz, really just standing in the center of the ring. It's the toughness of Ruiz against the boxing skill and finesse of Diego de la Hoya here as we get into the second half of this fight. What adjustments have you seen from de la Hoya that really make him so effective i see the adjustments that he make is just making this guy really not do too much and that is reese reese right now is just really now um in this round which he wasn't doing the last couple of rounds is really trying to like force his punches on de La Hoya. and when i see the adjustments that de La Hoya is making i spoke about it earlier is that now he's ah, let him boxing out. a little break. bit break and let then him go. he's right there in front of him but he's not there to get hit this the ring generalship. When you see the ring generalship, the side, the left, uh, doing different things in the ring in one fight, it's, it's really impressive. It's, I'm not overhyping it, I'm just letting people understand. When you see the growth in a young fighter like this, who, who has a lot on his shoulders to over, over, overcome and accomplish, when I see things like that, the subtle things are important. You know, Eric Ruiz started his career 13 and one, but he's four, five and one in his last 10 fights. And we asked him about it. He said, man, uh -uh, I've been fighting tough uh -uh, fighters stop. on short stop. notice. And when you back. look at who Go. he's lost to, Go. it's current world champion, Jesse Magdaleno, world title challenger, Manuel Tino Avila, former world title is Rico Ramos. They all have about an 88% win percentage. So he's not been facing slouches. Now you add in a right, prospect like Bring Diego De La Hoya. It's back. a rough road. It's a rough road. And what you just read off down to show that it wasn't tomato cans and some store shelves. He fought people that, that we know, that, that, that boxer know, credible people. And that's the experience he brings to the table for De La Hoya to show his skills. So th this, is, this is what makes not only a prospect, but it makes a fighter that grows into not only the public eye of boxing and also grow into his own ensures that he's there, that he's grown, that he's ready to go forward into the next step. I'm, that's that's what's gonna come. I'm impressed by De La Hoya's footwork. I think his defense is improving fight and fight out. And then he gets tagged by a nice right hand from Reese and then an uppercut. So it's the announcer's jeep as typically happens in any sport. But then he comes back a nice one too. Well, it was it was.
wasn't his drinks, he let his hands down, he got too relaxed, and he jumped it around and not throwing a punch. He must throw punches when he moves, at least to offset Ruiz. In other words, don't give myself any credit. He made the mistakes and he paid for it inside the ring. Absolutely. A la campana. Stop. Work out there. Keep establishing the jab. You're looking really good, but stay aware. I don't want him to land that uppercut one more time. So keep moving, keep yourself alert. I think De La Hoya should be throwing the uppercut because you know, Reese is coming in, he leans forward a little bit, you know, balance is leaning to the up front. And when a guy leans up front and the balance is there, he can't get out of the way to punch. He can't get out of the way to an uppercut, a stiff jab or right hand. So I like to see De La Hoya now throw that jab, but also put that uppercut every now and then like he just did from a side angle and do it more often and do it effectively going forward, either left or right. The shoe shine combination there from Diego De La Hoya. Ruiz tries to respond with a left, but the young De La Hoya is nowhere to be found. De La Hoya really mentioned the fact that he was a soccer player. He used to practice Kung Fu as a youngster, and one day he was so exhausted because he was also boxing that his dad said, you've got to make a choice. And when he stopped process was going through, De La Hoya said, I realized that my dad had never been to any of my soccer games, but he and my family went to every one of my amateur fights. So I said, man, go. it's a boxing family. I got to do this. He said, definitely in his DNA. And he, look, he's not embarrassing nobody over at the De La Hoya side family. Yeah, really, you can tell the pedigree. A grandfather, Mr. Vicente, an uncle in Joel Sr and his cousin Oscar De La Hoya really uh, made a name in the sport of boxing. Now Joel De La Hoya Jr. is his manager as well. So it's really a family affair that we're seeing with the De La Hoyas and so far he's making the name proud. Yeah, he has to be himself and not, you know, not his cousin. He has to be himself because they are big shoes to fill. And like he said, he said this, he wants to build his own way and legacy and this is the night he wants to get people following him every time he fights because this is what you have to do. You have to establish your own legacy by doing things special in boxing. And you know, B-Hop, we just saw how the weight of the last name Chavez really weighed on Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. against Canelo Alvarez and throughout his career. And Diego de la Hoya said, I'm used to this since the amateurs as he lands a beautiful right hand. He said, people told me that I won fights because of my last name. I mean, the kid has a 239 and 11 record in 250 amateur fights, so he's doing something right. He's doing something right. That's why I'll tell my son, you better be a banker or a teacher. <laughs> Too and much pressure. De La Hoya said, I don't want my kid to be a fighter. I don't want him to sacrifice like I have and get hit. And I couldn't handle it. My kid was no good at this sport. It's <laughs> tough. <laughs> it sure is. A lot better ways to make a living belt. like announcing b -Hop. Garcia working in the corner of Oxnard's Eric Ruiz. He trains at the gym where Vasily Lomachenko and Sergey Kovalev train. Igis Klaim is now owns the former Robert Garcia Boxing Academy. So Ruiz says there's a lot to pick up from all those great fighters. And one of them is toughness yes. because he sure enough got that. And you know, when you're around that type of energy and that type of knowledge, I mean, you gotta learn something, Bernardo. You gotta learn something, you gotta pick, you gotta rub, something gotta rub up off uh, on you. Rub off on you really, really quickly because you're in the mix of all that greatness. Wow, you can just see the speed of Diego De La Hoya throwing some flashy combinations in here. Maybe not as effective as when he throws his power punches, but there he gets caught with a nice lead because by he, Ruiz. Was, he was admiring his work. Yep. He was admiring his work because he did a three, four punch combination. Everything was on point, and then he stopped for a second and got hit. And again, this is learning. This is the learning process. You know, you don't admire your work. You, you hit the guy, you continue to hit him until he can't hit you. And you can't get complacent. De La Hoya said, I understand one punch can change everything. And speaking of punches, let's take a look at the numbers where De La Hoya through the first seven rounds has almost doubled the landed punch output of his opponent, Eric Ruiz, and the 33% accuracy compared to 24%. Those are good numbers when you can have 
at least a plus nine in the percentage category means you're doing things right. You can see the speed, accuracy, just the flashiness of De La Hoya. And I, and I want to see that more often. I mean, I want to see it because he, he can get away with it because Ruiz is much slower in his feet movement and also in this response to counter. So I would like to see De La Hoya throw a little bit more of those punches, combinations like that, and where he can go ahead and really dictate every second of this fight and just move to the left and move to the right as he do now. Ring generalship, we talked about it earlier. He has that, it's natural to him. And the judges really take into account when you make your opponent fight your fight, and there's no doubt that by stalking him with a lot of ineffective movement, Eric Ruiz is fighting the fight that Diego de la Hoya is dictating. Uh, let him out, let him out, stop! Through stop. eight rounds. And it's a perfect way, Bernardo, to, to, to control your fighter. He can control Riaz, put his feet, basically have him go where he wants him to go, and then fire, and then go the opposite way, and make him constantly chase them, the dog or the bone, and have him going where he wants him to go. Some punches that don't do a lot of damage from de la Hoya, they look really good. A little bit of flash and just a smirk on the face of Eric Ruiz who says, I've been here, I've done this before. I'm just waiting to land that one shot. Listen for the bell. Zona, and we will be back on Saturday, there you July go. That's 29th. It. Golden Boy Boxing there you on go. ESPN, right there. Work, work, presented work, work. by there you the Gato Show. What the I can't wait to come back here when it's really hot outside and the action is even hotter like we're seeing right now with De La Hoya putting on a nice combination on Ruiz. That's, that's, that's the beautiful part about seeing a talent really, really blossom right in front of us. To see those three or four five punch combinations and then step to the side. I mean, we know we have it. Use it more and set it up. We're looking at something really special, but I'm, I'm trusting the process, Bernardo, to watch him, watch him elevate, watch him grow. And this is really a fight that really take him to really the next step up. I'm not saying leap, the next step up to another tougher, another smarter guy to represent him. There you go, he's only 22 years old in his 18th professional fight. And this is the type of fight against an opponent who has taken legitimate contenders and former world titleist rounds that really gives you a lot of learning experience. And you mentioned it, it's the growth process, it's that learning curve that instead of being steep, evens out as the fights progress. Nice from up, Diego. to the body there from Diego as the referee says, a little bit low there. Well, he recently had nothing to lose, so he should just really now try to just be out of character for a little bit. Just go right in, throw a lot of punches, try to rough him up. Maybe he get lucky, maybe he gets something in. Hey, maybe maybe he'll see that he can, you know, still try, try to pull off some kind of upset. But as long as he stay outside, Ruiz, he's going to get picked apart. He's going to get out gun, out smart, and he can't oh. win. There you go, that big red right hand that's, from Ruiz. But that's what he got to do more often. And he seemed to get that shot in, which is the right hand. I'd like to see him put on the left hook just to show that he can do it because anything that comes to De La Hoya's way is going to help him one way or the other. Sometimes you get lulled into admiring your own work. It seems De La Hoya is doing this in the last two rounds, maybe getting a little bit too sure of himself. But in boxing, B-Hop, one punch can change the entire fight. Now this is what he needs to do. Stay active and continue to dominate and dictate the pace. Stay active and not get bored. Because when things seem to be too easy are dangerous. Because one punch can pitch you down, you know, can change the whole landscape of that round of things go. Down the home stretch of Listen this fight. Round nine about to come to an end, and this Golden Boy Boxing Series promises great action. Break those up. doors down. Thank you. As Eric Ruiz, as expected, B Hop is in round 10 because this is as tough as boxers come. Tough and also schooling. This fight here is 10 rounds, and it was 10 rounds of schooling on both ends, but more beneficial to Delahoya. 
You know, you talk about schooling. You mentioned the fact that De La Hoya is dominating the fight, but learning how to deal with a tough guy like Ruiz who comes at you, who's always there, who you can't get rid of, that's part of the learning curve as well. Yeah, because everybody you ain't gonna get rid of. But you're gonna see when he watches his tape later on this week or whenever he watches, he's gonna see the things that he should do and should have done. And that's what we all do. We go back and we reflect and say, well, why oh. I ain't get this guy out of there? Why I ain't do more of this? That's the learning process. And it's, look, he has a, one of the best coaches in boxing that will let him know that. Joel Diaz in that red corner has, he landed a beautiful left hook on the chin of Ruiz, but boy, you see why neither one of these fighters have ever been knocked down. Ruiz has that desire. He's talked about his kids, how proving to them that no matter how tough things get, you can always get up and keep moving forward. He wanted to, you know, mention his son, Joel, 10, Jacob, 6, and Dominic, age 2. And he's proving to them that through all adversity, you can persevere and keep your head high if you put in an honest day's work. And that's true. But I, I expect him the last round, he got to know that he's not winning this. He just threw a couple of punches. But I like, I mean, this is the time you're in shape, you train, you know, you have all this motivation. You just mentioned it. Ruiz, go all the way out. There's no turning back. This is the last round, you know, less than a minute. Go all the way out and, and try to maybe something happen while you got a minute. Put everything on the line right now. Got to prove that. He's more than a fighter that just goes the distance against legitimate contenders. He's got to prove that he is a fighter that comes to win. And I think that's the big difference so far in what we've seen from Ruiz. He's, he's as tough as nails, but he just lacks that step to take never forward. Never been knocked down, never been knocked out. He's a tough guy. Yeah. I mean, the streets of Oxnard have primed him to become a very tough guy with a ton of pride. But De La Hoya really has come out here and proven everything you mentioned throughout this show. The fact that he is a legitimate top five prospect in the Golden Boy stable. He got those 10 rounds in, and you know what? It's a learning piece. There's another page going that notebook that says that I'm ready to step up to the next level. I mean, 122 has got a lot of talent. We got Rigo, we got Magdaleno, Ray Vargas, as now both fighters want to close the show here on ESPN. There's the final bell. That's what I'm talking about. There's the heart of two champions, two young fighters with huge dreams. In the After 10 rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Here are the totals. Steve Sandoval and Rocky Taylor both have it, 100 to 90. Chris Flores, 99-91. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated, Diego. Diego de la Hoya wins by unanimous decision, leaving no doubt, improving to 18-0.